Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, for those of you who missed it, I recently reviewed the new Ryzen 5 3600, and in that review, I compared it to the more expensive Core i5 9600K, and despite that, this was a battle that AMD largely won. Even so, many of you requested that I compare the R5 3600 to the now cheaper Core i5 9400F, so I went back, tested the 9400F, and today I bring you that comparison. The 9400F is the cheapest 9th generation Core i5 processor you can buy, and as of two months ago, it's been readily available for just $150 US, so that's roughly a 15% discount. That also makes it 25% cheaper than the R5 3600, so for those of you on a budget looking at purchasing a mid-range CPU, which one should you get? To answer that, we'll compare both CPUs in a range of games and applications. Both have been tested using the included box coolers, and yes, Intel's crappy box cooler works just fine with the 9400F. It's not even loud, and as a locked part, this CPU is very power efficient. I'm using 16GB of DDR4-3200CL14 memory for both CPUs, so that means the 9400F has been tested on a Z390 motherboard, but given you can snag one of those for as little as $120 to $130 these days, that's not really an issue. You'll pay similar money for a B450 board. For the graphics card, we're of course using an RTX 2080 Ti to reduce the CPU bottleneck, and the latest Windows, Game Driver, and BIOS updates available at the time of testing have been installed, so let's get into the results. As usual, we'll start with Cinebench, and here we see just what the 9400F is up against in core heavy workloads, as the R5 3600 was a whopping 52% faster, and that's really more than an entire tier above the Core i5 processor. However, perhaps a more ominous sign for the Intel 6-core processor is this single-core test. Here the R5 3600 was still 14% faster, so it's going to be very rare that you'll find a productivity workload where the 9400F can match the 3600, let alone beat it. Speaking of which, first up we have WinRAR, and this has traditionally been a strong showing for Intel. That's no longer the case though with the arrival of 3rd gen Ryzen. Here the R5 3600 was 84% faster, so quite the shellacking here. Moving on to 7-zip, and here the 3600 was 57% faster when comparing compression performance, and remarkably, that margin widens even further when comparing decompression performance. Here the 3600 was 66% faster. Next up, we have Adobe Premiere, and this is the Core i5 processor's best showing yet, as here the R5 3600 was just 26% faster. Obviously still a big win for AMD, but at least the margin is under 50% this time. The R5 3600 quickly gets back to crushing it though, with a 49% win in the V-Ray benchmark. Not much more to say here, so let's move on to the last productivity tests. Here we see when testing with Corona that the R5 3600 was 58% faster than the 9400F, taking just 146 seconds to complete the test. And finally, we see another strong win for the R5 3600, this time when running the Blender Open Data benchmark, where it was 53% faster. So let's move on to check out the power consumption figures. Here we see the 9400F getting its first win. It consumed 22% less power than the R5 3600 in the Blender benchmark. That said, it was 35% slower, so performance per watt still favors the Ryzen processor. Okay, so time for some gaming benchmarks, and first up we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Here the R5 3600 boosted frame rates by almost 30% over the 9400F, and I expect we'll see more results like this in other core heavy games. The Ryzen processor was just 6% faster in Battlefield 5 when looking at the average frame rate, but 34% faster when looking at 1% low performance, and the R5 3600 did provide a noticeably smoother game experience in this title. The gaming experience when testing with Shadow of the Tomb Raider was similar with both CPUs, though the average frame rate was 4% higher with the R5 3600, while the 1% low performance was improved by a 10% margin. We also see a solid performance uplift in The Division 2. The R5 3600 provided an 18% performance uplift for the average frame rate, and a 29% boost for the 1% low. As is often the case, we see that Far Cry New Dawn does trip up the Ryzen processors, and here the 9400F managed to take the lead, beating the R5 3600 by up to a 19% margin, so a very convincing win for the Core i5 processor. That said, I should note that the game still played extremely well on the R5 3600 with no frame stuttering to speak of. Frame rates in Rage 2 were quite similar, though the R5 3600 does manage to produce a slightly better 1% low result, 
but overall, both CPUs delivered a very similar gaming experience. We do see a very similar thing in Hitman 2 as well. Average frame rates were very similar, but the R5 3600 was slightly stronger when we look at the 1% low performance. And finally, we have Total War Three Kingdoms. And as was the case with Rage 2 and Hitman 2, we find very similar performance when comparing the average frame rates, but an advantage to AMD when looking at 1% low performance. In fact, here the difference is quite substantial with Ryzen offering 12% better minimum frame rates. Well, that was interesting, perhaps even a tad brutal here and there. I have to admit, it did feel a bit like feeding the 9400F to a wood chipper at times. Even in games, the 9400F was often a far cry from matching the 3600's performance. Unless, of course, we were actually testing with far cry. So, yeah, let's just move on and check out some cost per frame graphs. So this is quite interesting. On average, the R5 3600 was just 11% faster than the 9400F. And while that is partly due to some CPU limited titles such as Hitman 2 and Rage 2, but I don't feel it's a misleading margin given the Intel CPU should be at least as fast in older titles. And we got a glimpse of that in Far Cry, which is built on a dated game engine. This means overall the R5 3600 was 20% more costly per frame, but that can actually be a little bit misleading because at times the 9400F wasn't nearly as smooth as the Ryzen processor. So let's move on to check out the 1% low results. Here the R5 3600 was just 12% more costly per frame, so we're getting close to an insignificant margin here. The only problem I have with this graph is that it doesn't take into account that the 9400F was indeed suffering stuttering issues in games such as Battlefield 5 and Assassin's Creed Odyssey for example. Meanwhile, in titles such as Far Cry New Dawn, where the Ryzen processor was slower, it was still able to deliver a silky smooth gaming experience. So while useful for a quick comparison, these average graphs don't always tell the full story. But even if they did, the 9400F has a bigger problem, and that problem is the Ryzen 5 2600, which provides roughly the same price to performance ratio, but on a much more attractive platform, and it doesn't suffer any stuttering issues in any of the games tested. This has been Intel's problem ever since AMD released the AM4 platform, complete with a slew of Ryzen processors. Not only does AMD support two, four, six, eight, and now 12 core processors all on the same socket, but they've managed to do so across three CPU generations. Of course, it depends on which motherboard you use, but the AM4 socket does support three generations. And this makes recommending Intel's eighth and ninth generation LJ1151 platform extremely difficult in 2019. Short of a high-end build with a Core i7-9700K or a Core i9-9900K, can't really think of a scenario where it makes an ounce of sense. The 9400F is a perfect example of this. Future upgrade options will be slim. And in a year or two, you'll definitely want more than six threads. The problem is a couple of years down the track, second-hand pricing for processors such as the 8700K, the 9700K, and in particular the 9900K is going to be horrible, as everyone who invested in the platform will be desperate to get one for a quick and easy upgrade. If you need any proof of this, hop over to eBay and check out this month's Core i7 7700K completed listings. 7th gen Core i5 owners are looking at having to spend roughly Ryzen 5 3600 money on a two and a half year old quad core if they want to play modern games on their current motherboard without them looking like they're running through a PowerPoint emulator. So with very limited upgrade options and no future support for upcoming generations, it makes recommending the current Intel LJ1151 platform very difficult. But platform compatibility aside, the Ryzen 5 3600 completely destroyed the Core i5-9400F in core heavy games and applications. And yeah, it does cost 33% more right now, but it was often 50% faster in applications and provided roughly 30% gains in modern games. Of course, if you only have $150 to spend on a CPU, then the Ryzen 5 3600 isn't going to be an option. And in that case, I suggest you look at the Ryzen 5 2600, and that gives you the ability to upgrade to something like the 3700X, the 3900X, or even the upcoming 3950X. And those CPUs will almost certainly be affordable on the secondhand market in a few years time. So for me to recommend the 9400F, it would honestly have to be priced at or around $100. So slightly cheaper than the Ryzen 5 1600, anything more than that. And I just feel it's simply not worth investing in an already dead platform. And on that note, I'm done with this one. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you didn't enjoy the video, well, sorry about that one. Not much I can do about it now. 
And if you would like to subscribe for more content, then there's that little red button and you can hit that and do that. And if you'd like some cool perks, then head over to our Patreon page. You'll gain access to our exclusive Discord chat. The monthly live streams with Tim and myself, we'll be doing that on Monday. So go sign up now so you don't miss that. It's not very expensive. And yeah, as always, just thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.